welcome to Finextra TV. We're here at MPE 2022 in Berlin. With me now in the MasterCard press lounge is Wojtek Papota, CEO and founder of Walletmore. So, hello Wojtek, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us. Hey, thanks for having me. Really good to have you on. We're talking about payment implants, a massive topic um, at this year's event. So we're really looking forward uh, to expanding on that. And you're in a great position because uh, you're the world's first uh, to provide payment implants and a full wallet solution to follow. So. Uh, bring us up to date with where we are with payment implants and uh, how is this even possible? So as you mentioned, yeah, that's true. Waltmore is uh, the first and still the only company that does those sort of things, which is implantable payment instruments. And uh, we are at the very, very early stage, of course, in this market. We just have a few hundred customers around the world. So it's definitely uh, even a pilot project, like a prototype that, that we are now offering to, to our ambassadors, because that's how we called uh, our customers. And it's pretty simple, because let's think of the, of the implant like a mini payment card that you can use wherever you are, whenever the contactless payments are accepted. Just tap your hand to the NFC reader and the payment is done. So as simple as it is with the card. All right, well, thank you very much for bringing us up to date then. So uh, tell us, what are some of the advantages then of uh, payment implants compared to the more uh, well-established instruments? So even though the main advantage of the payment implant is the fact that it's amazing in terms of having it, in terms of using it, and it gives you the sensation that you are, uh, let's say, a better version of a human. But on the other hand, we need to capitalize on the fact that Walmart implants are both ultimately secure and ultimately convenient. Because when it comes to bio bi uh, biometrics, you cannot forget your hand from, from home or from office, and you always have it. So you can always use, for example, your fingerprint to authenticate a transaction. But on the other hand, once your fingerprint gets stolen, you cannot change it anyhow. In terms of the tokens, the electronic tokens, like a FOB, like a card, uh, you need to manage that. You need to carry it. You have a chance to lose it. But on the other hand, if there is any problem with that device, you can just block it or reprogram it, depending on the solution that you use. So uh, Walmart implants combine those two amazing advantages, and that's why I believe they are the way forward, and that's the future for the individual customers to use it conveniently and securely uh, everywhere where contactless payments would be possible to, to authorize it and to proceed. Fascinating. I mean, it is a really exciting future. Uh, and, it certainly is. Um, with talking about the opportunities and the advantages, it's worth talking about maybe some of the challenges and hurdles as well. As well. So uh, what are some of those challenges with um, merging uh, the, um, the digital and the physical identity there? What about that? I believe, uh, I mean, Waltmore is certainly a very disruptive innovation. And whenever we are looking at the uh, product life cycle of the disruptive innovation, we are always starting with the same group of people. It's innovators and early adapters. And it's no way we can get to the mass market in the matter of a couple of years. It will take a number of years, probably like 10, 15, to normalize the solution. Because at the moment, the technology, the digital infrastructure is already there. We have no issues with that. Uh, the, the case is that we need to normalize the device. We need to normalize the, uh, let's say, the approach to put a device into your body, even though it's 100% safe. It's the safety of the device is confirmed, but all the certificates, studies, research, everything that you, you name, like Walmart wins all the discussions about the biosafety, but what matters at the moment is just the willingness from the banks, from uh, the schemes, from uh, every party that is involved, in issuers, acquires, every party that is involved in the whole uh, transaction scheme. So. Uh, I believe we are now facing a social acceptance kind of a challenge and it's the only challenge that we are facing at the moment. But on the other hand, it's the hardest one to come over because uh, we are all humans and we are like by nature not super, not super keen to introduce that disruptive changes to our lives. So I believe uh, the way forward would be to uh, capitalize on our ambassadors and as long as people see that this device is used by a friend, a uh, member of a family uh, or a famous person, that's the way forward to uh, bring the uh, device to the mass market. And that's what we are working on. But I'm aware that it's a very long-term game, but on the other hand, a very uh, fruitful long-term game. 
so changing perceptions uh, is at the top of the agenda as well then. Yeah, of course. So it has always been. Yeah, so taking all of that into account then, could you give us sort of a, a summary? By no means an easy question, but uh, what do you think the future in the space holds? I believe uh, it's not related only to the implantable technologies, but I believe that everything whatever we are talking about the identity or we are talking about payments or authorization, it's becoming more and more digital. Uh, we are seeing this with the European Commission's project about digital identity. We are seeing this by uh, multiple initiatives uh, handled by banks, uh, schemes and all the other companies that are present out there. And I believe that world more sort of uh, matches these trends out there. And uh, since more and more gateways and paths are there for the world more to, to step in and to follow, such as being able to offer customers not only a payment solution in the implant, but also an option to, for example, authorize their, their, their identity when they are, for example, uh, at the airport and they need to identify themselves to board the airplane or uh, to go to the uh, local doctor and show them a medical documents that they are willing to show, of course. And uh, all of these challenges related to uh, the cyber security, to the data management challenges are there to be handled by Waltmore. But uh, from a technological perspective, the technology is there. What matters is the willingness from those partners to enable us uh, to offer those services to, to, to our customers. Because uh, from our perspective, our device, the implant, uh, is always seen and marketed as an enabler as an aggregator of multiple features. But in order to be there and to offer those applications and all of these services, you need to have the connection with those partners. So it's not only a challenge towards the individual customers, but also the uh, companies that would be willing to work with us and to put, put themselves on the same level as Waltmore uh, when it comes to the, the disruptive innovator. Sure. Sometimes sure. it might be scary, but uh, I believe, again, in the long-term game, that's something that will happen. So partnerships are key. So um, I'll let you get back to the event so you can share your insights with uh, the other delegates and sponsors. But Wojtek, thank you so much. It's thank you very much for having space. me. Yes, thank you very much.